and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And why and are you wearing orange today? I was just about to tell them uh, because I have a little orange myself. You do, uh, and in fact, a better orange, I think, than I do. But the East Side Catholic School students in Seattle, who we've been raving about for several weeks, are holding a big "Everybody Wear Orange" day this week in support of the gay vice principal who got fired and all LGBT teachers who are getting uh, ousted by their religious yes. schools. I was reading that in the Times that some of the students support getting rid of that gay teacher. Really? But, 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 but uh, they're afraid to speak out. Good. That's the idea. <laughs> You know, that let you be the ones who are ashamed for a change instead and, of us. And, well, yes, and let us just uh, uh, explain that we're not against anybody speaking, but of course. we don't think everybody should be honoring bigoted speech. Right. Uh, so that's why we would say but something lots, like lots that. Lots to talk about in the news. Uh, <laughs> you may have read that Virginia's new attorney general, a Democrat, announced that he will not defend the state's unconstitutional ban on same-sex marriage. Elections do matter. And uh, the story that fascinates me the most this week, perhaps, is the vote in the Indiana House on moving a constitutional amendment against same-sex marriage to the ballot this November. Uh, it's going back and forth between the House and Senate. It's very close. It ain't over till it's over. Has many possible outcomes. Uh, in the Ivory Coast, an LGBT rights group had its offices ransacked by a mob. A Nigerian court that was trying men for homosexuality is attacked by an anti-gay mob. Well, you hear this story. Yeah. And in a story that we started to talk about last week in Kenya, uh, a beloved author has come out. Sad news from India. Our hopes are dashed. The Supreme Court is refusing to review its decision reinstating the mm. laws criminalizing uh, gay sex or sodomy in general. I don't know if it's ever used to prosecute straight people, but it is a sodomy law. Right. Uh, the parliament's the only one that can make the change now. Well, I think it's a buggery law, you know, yeah. but, and yeah. I think that is a gay thing. And that's one of the reasons, that, well, we'll discuss it in a All moment. Right. The mayor of Sochi, Russia, says there are no gay people in this town. Get your pens and paper handy. We are going to give you details about a big uh, anti-Russia demonstration next week and the opening day of the Olympics here in New York. You are going to want to come to this and know all the details, so be prepared. All right. Robert De Niro has a, uh, done a new documentary about his gay daddy. And Andy will review a new Irish play on Broadway with Deborah Messing, a Breck play with Justin Vivian Bond and Steven Spinella, and a new play on two of the founders of the NAACP. And, of course, we're going to review that wedding at the Grammys, presided <laughs> over by Queen Latifah. Uh, very controversial on many, many counts. Okay. And, uh, I should apologize up front if I look strange this week. A, I'm coming down with a cold. I should have a privacy screen here. And I forgot my notes. So it's out of my head in Andy's notes. But you Anne, won't see well, me checking things Anne didn't off. Need notes. First time I was ever on television with Ann, you were hosting something for Hedrick Martin Institute on television. Didn't use any notes. Spoke completely clearly. I was in awe of what you could do. It's all, can do. it's all because my parents made me uh, talk at the dinner table on Sundays and do little performances was, of the Mikado when I was there about eight. There was no talking at our table. Really? It was just eating. People didn't come up for air. There were like 11 <laughs> of us around the table, literally, and everybody just jumped. There wasn't much conversation going on. Well, then, there then were only we, five kids. Then, Who were the other? Uh, Grandma was always living with us. Okay. And then uh, my sisters, when they got married, they would often have their their okay. their husbands there yeah. living with us yeah. and sometimes their kids so there was one time when there were 11 every night i i had dinner parties for four people and i'm exhausted if, i don't know how my mother did it if we, we helped her if we weren't articulate and well read at eight <laughs> we weren't eating <laughs> all right well, let's start off in virginia okay 
uh, because you said elections have consequences. They do. Mark Herring won this uh, vote by a couple of hundred votes. To be to the be new the attorney general of Virginia. We, the Democrat, uh, Democrats took over the administration of Virginia statewide uh, from the hideous Republicans, Governor McConnell now under indictment, uh, Attorney General Cuccinelli wanted us all to go back to the Stone Age. So uh, McAuliffe won the governorship and Herring was in a huge battle for the attorney general uh, position weeks after the election. Right. Uh, finally won it by a few votes. And, and now we, we didn't know what he was going to do about the lawsuits. There are two big lawsuits there on same-sex marriage. We didn't know what he was going to do. Well, in fact, in 2006, he had voted for the well, uh, ban on same-sex marriage why as a member of the legislature. Why won't you let him speak for himself? We do have a videotape of him explaining what he's going to do in these suits. Roll tape. Having determined th after thorough, rigorous legal analysis that an unconstitutional law is infringing on the rights of Virginia families, I have a duty and the authority to act to protect them and their rights. Until the courts can rule on the matter, the state registrar, Janet Rainey, will continue to enforce the current ban, but neither she nor I will defend its constitutionality. Even as courageous Virginians have advanced the cause of equality, the Commonwealth of Virginia has too often argued on the wrong side of our nation's landmark Supreme Court cases. With Prince Edward County as defendant in the landmark school desegregation case of Brown versus Board of Education in 1954, with the Commonwealth fighting the right for Mildred and Richard Loving to marry despite their race in 1967 in the Loving decision, and in 1996 to oppose opening VMI to female cadets the same legal principles that applied in those cases <coughs> apply in this case today. As a legislator in 2006, I voted against the right of same-sex couples to marry. Even at that time, I spoke about the need to fight other forms of discrimination against Virginians based on their sexual orientation. But I was wrong to stop short of marriage equality. It's time for the Commonwealth to be on the right side of history and the right side of the law. So a state law and a state constitution cannot violate the United States Constitution, and I swore a duty to uphold both, and the Supreme Court is clear, the United States Constitution is the law of the land, supreme law of the land. I love it when you know, people change. I have just change. come to the Oops. conclusion that uh, I wouldn't want the state telling my son or my daughter who they can and cannot marry. As I interrupted him, <laughs> I love it when people change, and it's very moving. I love it when people uh, look at the law and follow it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, it is, I, all of this is so common sense to me. It's why when they passed all these laws against same-sex marriage. Fifteen years ago you said this. I, I said, you know, these are all unconstitutional. Read the United States Constitution. These are all going down, and one by one they are. But there is still one state, Indiana, which <laughs> is still thinking about... Mm -hmm passing a constitutional amendment against same-sex marriage when people of most states have exhausted this possibility. Spitting into the wind. Yes. So, talk about it. All right. So, I believe they already have a law in the state against same-sex yes, marriage. Yes, And they just are trying to up it with a state constitutional amendment. And they couldn't do it because Democrats were in control of one of the houses and they wouldn't let it come up. All right. So, now what they did was they wrote a, a proposed state constitutional amendment that would forbid same-sex marriages, forbid civil unions, forbid any recognition of any domestic partner relationship that resembled marriage. And they passed it overwhelmingly. Uh, a year or two ago. Yes, but then 
then the way it works in Indiana, it's slow. And other states. You, if you want to change the Constitution, it takes, it takes a while. You have to pass it twice in the legislature. You have to elect a new legislature before you pass it again. Yeah, and, and then it did. goes to the voters for a vote. So that was what happened in January. They were ready, and all of a sudden, they weren't ready. They moved it out of a committee where they thought it was going to lose. Uh, they put it into the Education Committee. And then some of the Republicans said, I don't want to vote for this unless you get rid of the civil union thing, because I don't want to ban that, too. Right. So In the House. So uh, the committee in the House, the second committee, did pass it as was, but then it went to the whole House, and they had this argument, uh, which shocked me, by the way, that mm -hmm. uh, any Republicans would stand up against any part of this. But the House oh, voted to delete the civil unions part of it. Now, 52 what that, to 43. But what that did was it triggered this whole strange thing, because uh, the rule is you have to pass it in consecutive uh, legislatures that are separate elected and then take it to the voters but if the, it changes in the meantime you started the clock all over again so, so. The, well so that they wouldn't then be able to, if if it stays this way and they can't get the the, the Senate's Senate. going to probably keep it the way it was yep and if the house won't agree to that then uh, it's dead for, uh, well well it may be dead dead but uh, here's well, what it happens. could be dead dead if the, if if the right if, if they the, can't reach any, any kind, kind of, of uh, compromise, compromise right. and vote on something but here's what happens. The House has voted on the changed version, which deletes civil unions and domestic partnerships. So the House said, we're only going to vote for it now if it bans same-sex marriage alone. That passed in the House. Now it goes to the Senate. But the Senate can either pass that version, which starts the clock again, and then the, uh, they'd have to pass it in another legislature in a year or two, and then it would get to the voters in 2016. Or the Senate can say, no, we're going to keep it the way it was originally. We're going to insist on that right. well, and keep the clock as right. going to the voters this year. Right. What would the National Organization for Marriage like to happen? Obviously, they wanted to go this year, but... <laughs> they would like us all to fall into the ocean. <laughs> That's what they would like to happen. As long as their seven donors don't fall into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, and that so is that's the all list. they have. So if the Senate passes the original version, they then go to a conference with the House and try to work it out. And if the House, the House could, uh, conferees could say, okay, we'll go back to the original version that bans civil unions and domestic partnerships. And if the whole House then agrees to that, yeah. in spite of having taken it out before, then we're still on the 2014 track. Right. But if everybody agrees to the amended version, then we go to a I mean, 2016 the, track. The polling is decent in Indiana that it might not pass, although it's not great, so it might pass. We just don't know. We don't. But it's silly because, you know, it's going to eventually Look, be overturned. Uh, to me, this is courts. a moral victory yes. uh, at this point, no matter what, because we did not expect to hold it up even this mm. much or change it. Well, we they worked very hard out there in India. We've reported that on it every thing. week. Every week they lined up a new group to speak out against this. Business groups, faith leaders. All, every week in, the Indiana Equality rolled out a new group. That's the model for folks around the country. And that's what I love about this Get story. Busy. Yes, that it is this grassroots, day by day, person by person action yeah. that gives you the chance of actually Keep having victories. Uh, Freedom Indiana is the group that has accomplished this this far. Freedom that, Indiana, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So if you want to check out more about the details of this, go to their website, Freedom Indiana, and you can get the whole story. And it's very inspiring, and that's why I love this story. Now, in Nevada, it's a different story from the attorney general there, I, Catherine Cortez Mastro. It has its inspiring moments, too. Well, she's urging the Ninth Circuit to uphold the state's constitutional ban on same-sex marriage. and. Well, she unfortunately submitted her brief in the latest round of the case to the court on the same day that the circuit came down with the uh, you can't exclude gay jurors just because they're right. gay decision. But she, she cites in her brief <laughs> bigamy and incest as banned marriages. Uh, Lambda will answer her over the next month. Uh, yeah, but the whole thing with her is that in her brief, she said uh, gay people or sexual orientation is not entitled to heightened yes. scrutiny uh, because we're all perverts or it's bigamy or whatever. And she submitted this brief that was all based on this level of scrutiny on the same day that the court had said, oh, by the way, sexual orientation is entitled to heightened scrutiny. So now, uh, to her credit, 
She has read that decision right. of theirs and has come back and said publicly, I have to rethink my whole brief because clearly the Ninth Circuit has just destroyed my entire argument. And one of the clerks in, I think it's Nevada, has withdrawn uh, his defense of the law. Absolutely. Yes. One of the, the county clerks that was uh, defending the ban uh, and refusing to hand out marriage licenses now says, oh, never mind. We call that getting religion. <laughs> No, we don't, but uh, whatever. <laughs> now, last week we told you so, about... So, to be determined in Nevada. Right. Last week we told you about uh, Anise Parker, the out lesbian mayor of Houston, about her going off to Palm Springs and getting married. So she got some criticism back home, from, from obviously from the right wing. Right. And here was her response. You don't commit 23, 23 years of your life to someone to make a political statement. I took four days off to leave my home and make a little wedge of time to marry the woman I love. They can get over it, she said. I love it when she says that. She said the same thing about that uh, business, oh, about, about the Duck d Dynasty people. Oh, yes, you know, she yes. Says, you They're know, redneck idiots, you know, I think. And you don't like that, get over it. All right. Well, I guess everybody on both sides is uh, like that. Right. In, what about uh, New in, York? Uh, well, interesting decision by a judge in New York this week. A lesbian uh, couple, uh, as the New York Times says, decided to start a family, and uh, one of them gave birth, and then they, they're married. They got married when it became legal in New York State. They married in New York State, and uh, they decided, though, that they wanted to uh, guarantee the uh, parental rights of both members of the uh, couple, uh, although they're both on the birth certificate of the child. Excuse so me, it's not I automatic? Say. Well, that's the thing. They went to court, and they said, we want to have a legal second parent adoption. Do you need that by when you... Non Excuse me. Go ahead. You've got to sneeze. You go ahead. Well, uh... <coughs> excuse me, by the non-birth mother. So they go to court, and the judge says, look, I'm all supportive of this. I'm a, I'm a great uh, same-sex marriage supporter, but I want to treat same-sex married couples the same as opposite-sex married couples, and opposite-sex married couples don't come right. in here and ask for a second parent adoption. Right. And uh, you're both on the birth certificate. You don't need a second parent adoption. You are legally the parents of this right. child. Well, the problem is that uh, they may travel to other states. One of them's from Nicaragua, and they may travel there, and their marriage will not be recognized, and the parental rights of the non-birth mother may not be recognized. And so that's where it gets tricky. What do our, our legal groups have to say about this? I don't know that they've said anything yet. Okay. Well, to be But continued. it's an interesting case because the judge keeps saying... Look, I, I want to uh, treat you equally. As my conservative brother said, when this whole thing got started, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I think every story we've done is about complications. Yes. I love that. So, I revel in the complications. But can Kansas is trying to resolve some of the complications. They've got a bill there to let groups and individuals who uh, make excuses for not serving gay couples if they have religious objections, which is really piling on. Well, uh, this is a complication that is uh, that is a mess All right, and so comes let's, up week after week. Let's talk about the State of the Union, uh, our president. Okay. Well, uh, some of our, you ask about major legal groups and their opinion of the court case. Uh, the major uh, LGBT groups are putting out press releases about being upset that the president in his State of the Union speech did not talk specifically or promise to issue an executive order forbidding federal contractors, businesses doing gov business with the federal government, from discriminating against their employees on the basis of sexual orientation now, or gender now, expression he or identity. He keeps saying, and in the fact sheet associated with this from the White House on the State of the Union address about how important he felt the Employment Non-Discrimination Act was. But this speech was supposed to be about how I'm going to take executive action because the Congress won't act. Well, it and was. This, and, this, and he didn't talk about us, and he should have. Well, he talked about raising the minimum wage and doing that by executive order yeah. with federal contractors. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he can't say everything. I will defend <laughs> the fact that, okay. uh, you know, I want him to issue it, too, and I think he should. And he keeps saying, I'm going to pursue the legislative. Uh, didn't it pass the Senate? Aren't we? Yeah. 
yes. waiting on the impossible house now? Well, don't forget we don't like the bill the way it is because it has that very bro overbroad religious exemption. There you so go. I'm, I'm not rooting for it in the House. So maybe uh, an executive order would have fewer religious exemptions. It might have some, but we'll see. Okay. We need to work for a clean bill. Okay. All right. Now, um, okay, let's talk about uh, California. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hey, the new Speaker of the Assembly is someone we know, not personally, but out lesbian Tony Atkins, 51, of San Diego. She served as the director once. We got a picture of her there. She served as the, then she was in the middle there with the homeless people. Good for her. Uh, served as the director of the Women's Care Clinic for more than 20 years in San Diego. She grew up in Appalachia, apparently speaks with a little southern lilt in her accent, and is the daughter of a coal miner and a seamstress uh, in a place that had no running water or indoor bathrooms. But she's married to Jennifer Lassar, and she served as the interim mayor of San Diego. Once. Yes, she did, and she replaces John Perez, who was the out gay speaker of the assembly before her, union leader. And, you know, she says, look, it's not obviously not my my only issue, but she is a lesbian activist, mm -hmm. and they do do a tremendous amount out there in California to get a lot of bills passed. Right. We, we're lucky if we get one every five years here in New York. Please. Uh, uh, Ten and years. then we have a, a couple of uh, sadder cases about violence against LGBT people. Yes. Uh, you want to start with Ohio? Yes. In, o in Ohio, we have a, a, a picture there. This is of a 22-year-old. Uh, Alliance Ohio college student Justin Early. You, uh, yeah, he he was murdered in late December by a guy named John R. Fox, 34, who was a registered sex offender with a criminal record a mile long, that, who lured him on Craigslist. Then he kills him, hides the body in the closet for three weeks, which is why we're only talking about now. Now we just. We want to use this very tragic case to remind you all that when you meet via hookup, uh, we urge you, there are all kinds of safety tips that you could do. We urge you to meet in a neutral place. Don't go directly to the person's home. Meet at a bar, meet at a coffee shop, so that other people see the uh, other person. Some people say they even take a, take a picture of the person and send it to your friend when you see them and make a joke about it or something like that. Uh, uh, but something that... If you're that seeing a picture of them online, send that to your friend. That, that's something that protects you. So they also said when you're going to go meet somebody, although it's a little late for this, leave a note behind to where you're going so that, I mean, both, you could, of course, just be abducted or something like that. Whatever. There's all kinds of things you can do for safety and should. Very sad about Justin. Very sad, and uh, you know, people I think are afraid of looking paranoid or whatever. But they, uh, these things really, really happen, and we tend to hear about these cases, uh, you know, a couple of times a month. I have friends least. to whom it's ha they, my. I have friends who've just been robbed. Yeah. you know, uh, from their apartments with yeah. knockout drops and things like that. So, you know, look a little nerdy, look a little paranoid, and uh, protect yourself. As we used to say in the construction business, safety first. All right. Uh, uh, but we can't say that Randy Jenner was not uh, trying to be safe. He was just coming home from the theater and an uh, after theater party. Uh, he's a journalist and theater writes about the theater. Filipino walking up Seventh uh, Avenue, a couple of blocks from home, and boom! Some guy gets out of a car and just brutally beats the just cold, hell cold out of him. Cocks him. I mean, it's a totally surprise attack. He didn't see anything. I uh, really brutalized him. He ends up in the hospital. Uh, uh, brain surgery uh, took a couple of days to come out of it. Still doesn't remember the attack. But there were bystanders who saw this guy get back in a car, got the license plate number, and there has now been an arrest. We don't know that this was gay bashing. We, we don't, don't know what the motive was. Could uh, have been anti-Asian, too. But he was, he was not robbed. No. Nope. Uh, and he was just beaten. It was, uh, you know, whatever it was. So there was a big vigil. Seventy-five people turned out for a vigil yep. on Sunday night. All and over the news here in New York. A, a big very, news a very story. big issue in the Filipino American community yep. as well, which is yep. good to see folks come out. And uh, so uh, our thoughts are with you, Randy. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Uh, well, another thing that happened in New York is a straight guy is suing for discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. He works at Trinity School in Manhattan, 
And he says that Prep his school on the Upper West Side. Yeah, you know, very fancy school. He said his lesbian boss discriminated against him based on his gender, sexual orientation, age, and traditional family status. He said he was excluded from social events with them. Now we don't know. We don't know if any of this is know. true. We don't know who's right and who's wrong. But it shows that you can use the law uh, on you know if you are straight and you this does happen to you. Uh, laws against discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation apply to everybody and to think that sexual orientation is just a code for gay is wrong uh, anyone can be discriminated against on the basis of their particular sexual orientation and has the right to uh, sue or register a complaint about yes. it yes okay all right uh, Chris Cluey uh, there's an update on that story this is the kicker former kicker for the Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings, Vikings yep. he claims that coach prefer P-R-I-E-F-E-R, -E -E yes. the one he said is anti-gay. Yep. He says that, uh, and Prefer denied making anti-gay comments, but Cluey's lawyer says texts support claims that the Vikings knew about this before Cluey was released last May uh, after the homophobic remarks. And they're coming up with names of witnesses who were in the room, and uh, it looks like they have some pretty strong evidence on this. And speaking of sports, by the way, we didn't mention Jason Collins, the, the uh, out basketball player of the NBA who hasn't been able to get another job yet, uh, was in the uh, with Michelle Obama at the State of the Union. Oh, well, and and wasn't mentioned by the president in his speech. He made some well, he made some oblique remark about tolerance or something, and they took a picture of him in the in the in the balcony, so nobody knew what the hell it was about. No. But the president did say something about sexual orientation and marriage. He did. Uh, well, he talked about working with governors on uh, marriage equality or something, and people were sort of saying, "Huh? What's that all about?" What is this disturbing suicide report from the Williams Institute? Uh, the Williams Institute and. Uh, uh, the and a transgender organization and uh, the National Suicide Organization have gotten together and analyzed uh, statistics from uh, the uh, National Transgender Study that has been done before. You know how these uh, reports often reanalyze data. They go into bigger studies yes. and tease stuff out. And this new report that you can find on the Williams Institute uh, website uh, says uh, the headline from it is that 41 percent of people who identify as transsexual or transgender uh, also report having made suicide attempts. Mm. Now this is more than suicide ideation, which, which we know to be very high. About it. Yes, yes, in the LGBT community, uh, these are actual attempts. Now. Uh, there are also many factors that contribute to this, and mostly it's about how people are treated and the experiences they have in their families or friends or at work, uh, which can uh, propel them in that direction, and depression, of course. Right. Uh, but it's it's an, uh, a much higher rate than in the uh, population in general, right. and so if you're interested in examining this report, go to the Williams Institute uh, website and you'll find no, it there. Uh, obviously it can be a very isolating experience obviously being gay or lesbian was very was is very isolating for a lot of people a lot less so now because more and more of us have come out but one of the things we learned even in doing the show and having transgender guests on is that many do not want to come out they want to be just seen as the new gender that they are and not, not have to identify well, as transgender which, that's which, true which, of a lot of gay people too yes but but I think I think more so with transgender folks uh, I, well, this well, is the from goal, this the is goal, from this is this is from yes, a transgender yes, yes. Uh, person telling telling us this on the show. The when goal we brought for up many the issue of coming out, tra particularly transsexual people, is to assume the uh, the new gender identity and uh, and not be seen as having right. transitioned and uh, uh, and that is that. Right. That's the uh, right. life goal. Right now, somebody who has come out is the is uh, one of the leading candidates for student body president at the University of North Carolina. Uh, Frank Bruni wrote a good column about him in the New York Times, the out columnist at the Times. His name is Emilio Vicente, 22, a Latino, undocumented, and gay, uh, and yet. Uh, one of the leading candidates for a student body president embodying this. He's one of these kids who came over with parents when he was little yes. and would be affected and by were, the Dream Act. They were deported. Yes. <laughs> but well, no, they went back because if somebody was sick back there uh, uh, to take care yes, of somebody. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
but he's still here and uh, has taken a very prominent out role. Hawaii is joining the bandwagon of considering a ban on gay conversion therapy for minors. These are M-I-N-O-R-S. <laughs> yeah. Kids, young people. Uh, a hundred people have already signed up to testify. When you have a public hearing in Hawaii, they come out. I mean, that marriage thing, what was it, like 5,000 people testified? Yes, yes. Unbelievable. Well, who are the hundred who've uh, signed up? Which side? <laughs> I don't know. Because it's the evangelical groups that turned out thousands I against marriage. Know. They could be coming to testify that they're all ready to convert us. And then we have a, a, uh, we have a story from Oregon about the first out college football player. We've got a picture of them there is Connor Mertens of Willamette is that how you say it? Will Willamette. Willamette University. Although some, now, may, some may say Willamette. Well, but. it's Division Three, and he's a redshirt uh, freshman kicker, but it's a start. Well, the deal is... He came is, out as bisexual, by the way, he, to his teammates, and here's what he said. I'm bisexual, he told his coach. Yeah. I'm bisexual, I like dudes, and I have a boyfriend. <laughs> and next week, I'm telling the whole world. <laughs> and the coach said, fine. Well, Great. before he said that, before he said that to the coach, he said, "Am I a good kicker?" Because <laughs> he wanted to know whether he was going to uh, lose his his chance at being on the team. Because as a redshirt freshman, he is not officially on the team yet. I mean, he hasn't played officially, uh, so. Uh, you know, he was taking a chance, but everybody's been extremely supportive. Okay. Uh, the TSA will allow same-sex couples to go through pre-flight screening as a couple now all over the world. Uh, there had been complaints about American Airlines personnel in me, me, metal, metal, Medellin, Medellin Colombia. Yeah. Uh, and, and, Explain to me why people want to go through as a couple. I, <laughs> Well, it's more, it's, it's because otherwise, more fun? You, because look, when you, you've been on these lines, yeah. one of you is over here, one of you gets sent to that line, you get on a different line, you want to leave together. Well, you can get on the same line together. Mm, maybe. <laughs> well, I guess family, you don't want one left behind yeah. while you've already gone right. through. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. and I get it. I get it. And then there's immigration issues. A couple from India uh, here applying for asylum. Uh, Gay couple. Based on the oppression of gays back home in, in, in India, who had been in detention in El Paso. The case, the Immigration case, detention is one of the worst wow. situations. It's you, purgatory. It is, and you have no access to uh, the rights that American citizens usually have, and these places are privatized and you're treated horribly. The case was helped by the fact that India's high court reinstated the sodomy laws. Uh, we'll more about that later. Their families had threatened to kill them back home, but that wasn't enough. Uh, but they were granted asylum on December 20th. Uh, when the, the sodomy ban was reinstated by I, the Indian Supreme very, Court. But I want to read that given that their detention, uh, uh, that they were in detention here, one of them said, we wish to stay in the sky, not here, not on earth. In other words, they've been through hell. They have. And even though they've been granted asylum, this has been a hellation. They're, you know, they're not, I guess they're not so sure about <laughs> Our place as well. Even after they got out of detention, they're not having such a great time here, and uh, they, they're not uh, finding this heaven on earth. And if we have more time later, I'll talk about that religious freedom case in Louisiana. Okay. okay. Although we're... Yeah. How are we doing? Maybe not. Well, right, we're doing okay. Not. We're doing Russia. okay. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's finish up the India oh, case sure. first, as long as we're moving to international news. So, uh, you may remember that a few weeks ago, the Indian Supreme Court, to everyone's shock, uh, in a case that had been going on for some years, suddenly comes out with this decision that says, you know what, we uh, are reinstituting the ban on sodomy, because after all, it's only about a sex act, it's not about people, it's just the sex act, and that's perverted and horrible, so we're recriminalizing sodomy. Because in 2009, a lower court, appeals court, had gotten rid of them, and it, it seemed like for the whole country, practically. Right. So then everybody's in complete shock that the Indian Supreme Court has reinstituted this ban, and even the government decides this is not a good idea. Well, the, gov the government said it's not a good idea, and they did appeal to the court, but yeah. the court rejected all of these petitions. That's and the new decision. That's the new decision, but if the government wants to get rid of the law, and they don't have much time because right. there's an election coming up, and they're going to lose. 
<laughs> and the more conservative <laughs> government is coming in. So do they have the guts at election time to repeal to, this law? To go to Parliament and uh, say... Un we, I would say unlikely. I would be happy to be shocked about that. Absolutely. But I, uh, the, the, they know, could find ways to uh, not bring it up. The law is rarely enforced. It does carry a 10-year prison term. But it is used by the police to harass gay people. And, and We're criminals. What happens with these laws is they say, oh, it's rarely enforced. It's rarely enforced. It's rarely enforced. George Bush said that to me. It, about the Texas law, to me. <laughs> Well, he was running I'm for president. I'm sure you've told us that story, yes. but whatever. Uh, but what it does is intimidate people. It it gets in the way of HIV prevention. It gets in the way of people being publicly open. I it gets have told in the way that. of uh, you know gay clubs being uh, visible. It just drives yes. everything underground, and it it gives families license to reject people. It's I don't care if it's uh, rarely enforced. It uh. sets up a system in the country. That uh, is horrible. I agree with you. Thank you. Okay. Now we can talk about Russia. Okay. The, the uh, sad but funny news uh, this week was from the mayor of Sochi, who when asked about gay people says, we don't have them in our town. Uh, he says, uh, we're, we, because we don't live there, we're welcome if we respect Russian laws and we don't impose our habits on others. <laughs> uh, there are two that, gay clubs in Sochi. Well, he said this to a BBC interviewer who said, really, I've just <laughs> come from a gay club. Who were those people in the club? Maybe they're just happy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the big brouhaha this week has been around the corporate sponsors of yes. the Olympics. The, some, you know, we've been after them for some months now, and we've been asking the corporate sponsors all of whom are companies that do billions of dollars of business in Russia on an ongoing basis. Yep. This isn't just about the Olympics for them. And we have said to them, look, you knew these laws were coming. You did nothing to stop them. You have got to go to Putin and say, this is horrible. You must repeal these laws. You must make life safe for LGBT people in Russia. And they wouldn't do it. So... They wouldn't do it, and they wouldn't... We're messing with them. Well, exactly. We also want them to, uh, to uh, you know, they keep saying, we are the gay-friendliest uh, company in the world. We have 100% yeah. rating from HRC. And we say, yes, but do you have these same rules in Russia for your employees and customers there? Uh, do you publish those rules in Russian in Russia? Do you speak up? Do you have uh, advertising in Russia that is diverse? and friendly? And the answer, of course, is no well, to all of this. Yeah. So uh, Queer Nation and others have been demanding all this from sponsors. They have said no, so we started messing with them. And we got particularly mad at Coke because you may remember the story last week of the poor little protester who showed up on one of these Olympic torch relays with this tiny little rainbow flag and stepped out and, and held the flag and got flattened by uh, uh, Russian and Olympic security. And the Olympic security guy who grabbed this guy had Coke logos all over him. So we went to Coke and said, is this really how you want uh, your logo used? And they said, yes, he violated the perimeter. He was a threat. He should have been arrested. Things don't go better with Coke. But so what uh, guys like Scott Woolage and uh, Queer Nation are doing are going, you know, all the, they all have these, uh, you know, online um, presences and yes. things like that, social media presences. Campaigns. Uh, campaigns that they think are light and funny and we love Sochi and Sochi and blah, 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 blah. Cheers blah. to Sochi. Right, there you are. And they go in and they, F, they screw with these and take their hashtags and all that kind of stuff and make, get to deliver the fact that the, it's a very anti-gay situation here. Uh, and they, the company set up these uh, Twitter uh, campaigns and they want everybody to comment and send messages to the athletes. So we start sending messages to the athletes saying, you know, boycott McDonald's and Coke and uh, get rid of homophobia in Russia. Right. And the companies are just freaking out. I wonder if the human rights campaign, which many of you are probably a member of, are going to mark these companies down for their anti you know, gay stuff. It's an interesting question because they have put out press releases demanding that the yeah. corporations uh, act right. Raising and, money off it. Absolutely. And with their T-shirts. Uh, right. So well, I mean, and look at Stoli. 
uh, Stoli is trying to buy goodwill in the community, a Russian company, although they act like they're from Lithuania, I think. Uh, Latvia. Latvia. They gave $300,000 to the L.A. Lesbian and Gay Center. And, uh, and they took it. I don't think we want them to be the official sponsor of Gay USA. I think that We're not the taking their money. L.A. LGBT Community Center should have taken that $300,000 and given it to the LGBT community in Russia. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if they took anything at all. But they should certainly have not been anything more than a pass-through. But instead, they've taken the money. So what about this new bill in the Duma, which is the Russian parliament? It would ban propagandizing sexual relations of any kind to children. Uh, and... Uh, it would, but it would still have provisions against the public promotion of homosexuality. It's, it's, it's only going to be used against us. Well, here's the deal. You may remember... It's like sodomy laws. You remember in the AIDS epidemic when Jesse Helms proposed yes. a law in Congress that said you cannot promote homosexuality. Uh, or heterosexuality. Well, uh, the original proposal was just that it be uh, homosexuality, and Ted Kennedy came in and said, we'll add heterosexuality so that the law will be meaningless. This is in the midst of the AIDS crisis, when we need to talk about sex. So I was reminded of that when this came up. What happens is that a few members of the Russian parliament, have, knowing what's going on all over the world and how humiliated they're being, have said, let's amend the law. Instead of making it illegal to promote non-traditional sex, to minors will make it illegal to promote any well, sex to minors. Uh, it was like the sodomy law, though, in the military. It, it forbade certain sex acts, yeah. most of which are committed by heterosexuals, but no heterosexual was ever thrown out of the military for that, only us. And the assessment of this proposal by uh, these Duma members is, A, it will never pass, and B, it will be applied unequally, and this is meaningless. But. Uh, what I like about it is that it is uh, concrete evidence that what we're doing is having an effect. It yeah. is making people begin to regret what they've done and take a look at ways to get out from under right. the worldwide condemnation. Well, I regret what Bob Schieffer did this weekend. He's yeah. the host of Face the Nation, and I don't want to make any ageist remark, being 60 myself, but it's time to put him out to pasture. I mean, he his idea of having a trenchant discussion about these issues that you, that you just explained very well on this program is to have Brian Boitano on, who doesn't want to talk about politics. No, you know he uh, you know he, he was he was pathetic, and then he has Billie Jean King on, who I have a lot more respect for, but and she's part of the Sochi delegation from the United States. But then she goes ahead and says, "I have complete respect for the Russian people. I've been going there since 1962." Well, Billie Jean, have you read the poll? 85% of the Russian people you love so much support these laws. And then she says, I have, uh, I hope that these Olympics will be a watershed uh, moment for the universal acceptance of all people. Well, that's just a bunch of pap. I mean, come on. Well, I, I'll, I'll say a couple of things on the other side. Because I like Billie Jean King. Yeah, me too. Uh, a, a significant portion of the United States population still doesn't like us, too. I know. Read That's some, why we uh, still do this show. <laughs> read some blog comments. And, uh, I, you know, she is proposing a, a somewhat Pollyanna-ish view, but I am hoping, and I think we all are, that a uh, revolution will break out at the Olympics. People will be waving uh, rainbow flags or speaking out in interviews or doing whatever, and I think that's what she's talking about. And I'm sure that she will speak honestly and openly when asked at the Olympics, as she has been. So, What about Brian? Um, Brian, I hope he doesn't. Brian <laughs> has nothing to say. He needs a briefing from Queer Nation. Oh. Well, here's what Queer Nation is doing. Yes. Uh, there are, there's talk by several organizations about what to do around the beginning of the Olympics. But here's the big thing in New York. On Thursday, February 6th, competition starts at the Olympics. The opening ceremonies, as is traditional with the Olympics, are not till the following night, February 7th. But competition starts the 6th. So Queer Nation on the 6th, on Thursday at noon, will be at the Russian consulate on East 91st Street between 5th and Madison Avenues, noon on Thursday. Right across from the Cooper Hewitt. 
Exactly. And uh, we will be demonstrating there yes. and letting the Russians know directly again. That uh, gay bashing is not an Olympic sport. Yes. That's the theme. So we would love to have all of you join us. Uh, it's going to be inspiring and important. And a We'll way be there. You can meet us. We will certainly be there sending a message if you'd like to. to the Russian government that uh, who are the real enemy that uh, they should not allow their citizens to be treated right. this okay. way anymore. All right, and we've been telling you that it's been getting worse and worse in Nigeria. Ugh. Now in the north, uh, in a city called, uh, I want to say Bauchi, B-A-U-C-H-I, mm -hmm. this is where Sharia law uh, rules. 11 men were arrested for belonging to a gay organization, for belonging to a gay organization. Well, that's the definition under the so law. So they're having the tr a trial for these in this court. Thousands of people from the town stormed the court, urging speedy convictions and executions of the men. Security fired shots to get the men safely back to prison. Now, that, now, and with all you know, due respect, the judge says no one can be sentenced to death until confirmed without a reasonable doubt. And he was starting to until. he was starting to doubt some of the uh, uh, the testimony yes. because people were coming in who were supposedly witnessing. He was supposed to actually catch them in the act. Yeah. And he was saying, "I'm attending a meeting." No, no. Well, <laughs> I mean, the thing is, it was sex. So anyway. Um, uh, so these protesters, this mob, was throwing rocks at these guys. Coming through the windows <laughs> of the courtroom, everybody's fleeing for their lives. <laughs> now, but then I subsequently read a story that a guy named John, this was in The Guardian, uh, UK paper, he's one of the leading gay activists there, but he's been living outside the country. He snuck into the country for this trial, snuck in at night, went to the trial, was in the courtroom when the rocks were flying, and somehow got out of there. He thought it was going to be a surprise, he was going to make a statement and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, but the people were shouting outside, bring them out so we can kill them. This is like the Salem witch trials. Uh, or worse. Yes. Uh, well, they killed them, too. Oh, well, anyway. John, we would be uh, very honored to have you as a guest on Gay USA, and you don't have to sneak in here. Well, on March the 7th, mark your calendars, we don't have an exact date on this, uh, we, there was a Nigerian act, act, uh, activist at the Queer Nation meeting last night. They, are, they don't want us to go to the embassy, well, maybe that's not, maybe we should, of Nigeria. They want us to have big international demonstrations and in the United States it's going to be at the United Nations mm -hmm. and at the White House. Okay. To, to, so people can, if people want to do something about this, I'm uh, in we'll, favor we'll of that. let you keep you posted about that. Okay. All right. A uh, couple of stories out of Israel. Uh, 25 gay couples that used surrogacy in Thailand to have children were being denied passports back for the kids once the kids were born. Oh. So they protested at the home of the government minister responsible, attacking him as a father of a newborn. <laughs> they got an agreement allowing the babies born, but they have to have been born by November of this year uh. in order to get passports. Uh, Israeli gays uh, used to go to India for surrogacy until India banned them. I, I, I'm but, speechless. And then we, uh, uh, but we told you, we told you a little bit about this last week. But they did a big story on the leading author of Kenya, one of the leading authors. His name is Binya Binyan Binyavanga Wainaina, 43. We have a picture of him. Uh, he he He's a favorite of Oprah's. Yeah, he has updated his memoir to bravely come out. Uh, the local paper called it a gay bombshell. He calls homophobia a Victorian export from Britain, and I wish that Africans believed that, because maybe they'd you know, stop oppressing us. Yeah. He is optimistic that they can, there can be change on the continent, but he warns that it's going to be turbulent. Um, I think said, we've seen that already. He said he came out because of the death of friends who were thrown out of their homes or AIDS weighed on him, mm -hmm. and he's gotten a lot of support from friends and even a Catholic priest. Okay. Good for him. And then... And back to uh, Israel, we are mourning the death there of a, a wonderful woman, Shulamit Aloni, who is considered the mother, in some ways, of the Israeli uh, gay movement. Not a lesbian that we know of. No, but... but, but uh, she was so supportive. She, was, she led the fight to repeal the anti-sodomy law there yes. in 1988. And she's been a civil rights leader on many fronts, and uh, yeah.
so died at 81 I think I don't know the exact age no, but okay. you know, we don't, we're not going to tell in northern Cyprus uh, they <laughs> repealed their ban on gay sex the vote was 28 to 1 but there were 21 abstentions <laughs> uh, this is a Turkish area of Cyprus and this is the last uh, area of Europe that had an official anti-sodomy law. So uh, Europe, well, it, certainly <laughs> things are not perfect. But Especially Europe, in Eastern Europe. But Europe is now officially uh, free of all sodomy bans. Uh, back to the bad stories in Africa, especially yeah. the Ivory Coast, uh. where the headquarters of the local LGBT group, Alternative Côte d'Ivoire, was attacked by a mob of 200 people in Abidjan Saturday. Following days of threats, which they reported to the police and the police did nothing about, this guy Clavar Touré said that the response from the security forces to the threats was deliberately slow. In the attack, the office was ransacked, a security guard was injured severely, and equipment was stolen. Man, and this is this country does not have a sodomy law. Exactly. <laughs> no anti-sodomy law, and yet the uh, the office is ransacked. And back to Uganda, President Museveni said he won't sign the anti-gay bill uh, be until he gets a report, he wants this in February, from scientists confirming that sex homosexuality is not genetic, but uh, is an acquired uh, uh, thing. I I'm <laughs> beginning to uh, appreciate the cleverness of this president of Uganda. First of all, he stopped this bill from going anywhere for years, and then when they finally did it without a quorum in parliament, he's found other ways to delay it. Right, I'll go back to these later if we have time. AIDS okay. news. Uh, well, uh, the good news, it's all about the uh, rent cap in New York for people living with HIV and AIDS. If, now, they're, if they're on government assistance. If they're on government assistance. Now, other people wait, 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 on wait, government assistance. I mean, you can end up paying 70 or 80 percent of your assistance on rent. Exactly. So they're saying if you're in this situation and you need other, have other needs in life, you need to, they want to put a 30% cap on the rent that Which you pay. Which exists for other people on public assistance, similarly situated. This is a traditional uh, law, but somehow people with AIDS have not been beneficiaries of this system and so we've been going to the state for years to say what about, we showed you a couple of years ago the most emotional speech we've ever seen on the floor of the New York State Senate by Tom Duane and the Senate voted for it yeah. which is Republican at the time yeah. and I believe yeah maybe not. Uh, and David Patterson the liberal uh, governor of New York vetoed, vetoed it, it. Was that, because the because Bloomberg didn't want it yes. but now so We're, now we've been asking the new mayor, de Blasio, uh, for a different opinion so that we might again go back to the legislature. And de Blasio has now said publicly that he does support the 30% uh, rent cap. That's great. Anything else on AIDS? Uh, I don't have my notes, <laughs> okay. so I don't know. But well, I think we're doing great without them. I think we're doing I great. Don't, I well, don't think you, I should ever bring my notes. It's all in your head. <laughs> it's all in your head. Entertainment news? Yeah, well, I'm going to say that the uh, headline is the yes, Grammys. Yes, sure. Uh, uh, and a lot of controversy around it. Uh, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis won a number of awards, and everybody said, oh, no, the white guys won the hip-hop awards. This is bad didn't, news. Didn't Eminem used to win the uh, yes, rapping but, award? but he had, he was embedded in the African-American hip-hop community. He was uh, discovered and sponsored by Dr. Dre. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis have come out of Seattle all on their own. So what category any... should they be in? Well, I'm not saying they shouldn't be in this category. I'm just saying that there were a lot of people they beat out who were saying, okay. wait a minute, what's going on here? But anyway, they, uh, so their big song, the song they won the uh, Grammys for was the thrift shop song, but the other song that's a bit a big hit for them is the same love song that you've seen played on this show. And Same love? Yeah. And it's about uh, marriage equality. And they were a big part of the marriage equality movement in Washington state that helped get it passed. And it's there. about growing up gay and yes. being isolated and all that kind of stuff. So, what did they do with that number? <laughs> they said, let's have a wedding. <laughs> they had a mass wedding. And not since the Reverend Sun Myung Moon <laughs> have I seen such a mass wedding. That's not true. We had a big gay one in the, after one of the marches on Washington Absolute back in 87. 79, I thought. No, 87. Oh, okay. 87. Uh, 30 
33 couples stood in the aisles of the Grammys. That was another point of contention. Why weren't they on the stage? Oh, if they're on the stage, it's too much of a stunt. Put them in the aisles. Oh, no one sees them in the aisles. And is CBS cutting away from them kissing? Yes. Maybe. But uh, they denied it. CBS denied it. But the big news is now a lot about gay stars in uh, show business, and they chose to have Queen Latifah, a big closet case, uh, preside over this. Now, I posted this on Facebook saying I think that's a shame yep. because she refuses to acknowledge her partner yep. uh, and who she is. Yep. And boy, did I get beaten up on Facebook by half the people writing in. I, I think it's an outrage. Look, uh, when I told people this was going to happen and she was going to preside over this, uh, they said, oh, she's out, isn't she? And I said, no, she isn't. Google her. That's like people who used to say, oh, you've got same-sex marriage in Hawaii, don't you? This is years ago. <laughs> yeah. F Fifteen years ago. People, uh, you know, they watch this show. <laughs> yes. you'll, you'll get the news. Yes. But uh, if you Google Queen Latifah gay, you get, I am not a lesbian, says uh, Queen Latifah. So we found that extremely disappointing. But to me, the most amusing thing uh, was uh, just I'll finish yes. this up and then go to that uh, so <laughs> so then it, she performs the ceremony and out comes Madonna hobbling with a cane in a white cowboy outfit and I say to myself Gabby Hayes <laughs> we have to show you a picture for you youngsters who don't know who Gabby Hayes was <laughs> Now, he I was admit, a star, a star of the 1930s. <laughs> Very well, funny guy. That that was my immediate association. <laughs> Others made more uh, current references. Glad you said it instead of me. <laughs> I get in a lot of trouble. Well, she got uh, she's injured her leg, so she actually was hobbling from an injury uh, right. using the cane. But it just was weird. But the real, to me, the real gay moment in the Grammys was this uh, young country star, Casey Musgraves who sang a song called Follow Your Arrow, which it turned out she was not allowed to sing on The View because it was so pro-gay and uh, and drugs and stuff. That Barbara it's, Walters. Well, it's all about if you want to do this, fine. If you want to do that, fine. And, one, and the uh, chorus is uh, kiss a lot of boys or kiss right. a lot of girls, if that's what you're into, aimed at young women. All right. We've and only I got, thought it was quite charming. We've only got a minute and a half. I just want to run through Go a couple ahead. of things. Robert De Niro has done an HBO documentary, a half hour about his dad, out gay. Robert uh, Sr., who was an artist. and uh, Light at Sunday. Yeah, he was an abstract expressionist who drifted into uh, more of um, Impressionism later in his life. Uh, in Madrid, they had the opening of the opera Brokeback Mountain. Yep. Uh, they, by, a, by a composer they call a complex modernist, but Annie Prue, is that how you say yep. her name? Yep. She did the libretto. Yep. Um, the, what is this story? Oh, I want to pay tribute to Pete Seeger, a great progressive activist. And uh, Bill Ballman, our social producer, so reminded me when they had a march to Albany from New York City to Albany when they actually marched up there. Uh, he gay lived. Gay march. Yeah, gay march, gay rights march. Uh, they stopped over and uh, Pete Seeger put them up at his house. Very nice. That was nice. 1972. He was a, he was just a great in many fronts. Yeah. Couple, couple of theater things. I um, uh, got a couple of pictures of these. The, I saw the play A Man's Man by Bertolt Brecht at Classic Stage, one of my favorite places. Uh, this, it, this included, we got a picture of this. It's, it, they, it's sort of an avowedly confusing anti-war play. That's what they say at the beginning. Uh, but despite the presence of Stephen Spinella, Martin Moran, and Justin Vivian Bond, I'm sorry, it was boring. Um, you got 20 seconds. John Patrick Shanley, outside Mullingar, a little too, uh, what's the word, precious for me, despite good performances from Brian O'Byrne and Deborah Messing. And I really like Dr. Dubois, du, du Bois and Miss uh, Covington, Ovington, I'm sorry, Ovington, about two of the founders of the NAACP. We had a picture of that. Uh, it was uh, terrific. Um, uh, catch it at the Castillo Theater. Uh, and we will see you next week, and we hope to see you next Thursday at noon at the Russian Consulate here in New York, 91st Street between 5th and Madison, noon on Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Oh, well. For write, saving my... I write big. Bacon. <laughs>